So I got contacted by a developer from Cradle Games, which is a small game studio from Canada who are working on a Souls-like game called Hellpoint. They've just finished the first demo of Hellpoint and asked me if I would like to play it and give them feedback. And of course, as a big fan of the Soulsborne series, or at least the Souls series, since I do not own a PS4 so I can't play Bloodborne, I said yes. Before we go any further though, I would like to stress that this is a pre-alpha version of the game. It's nowhere near even pretending to be complete, it's just the first demo they've put together. That being said though, I'm not gonna hold back on any criticism. This is a pre-alpha demo designed to get feedback from players. And I really want to see this game improved because while the demo was somewhat clumsy and downright irritating at times due to it being pre-alpha, I've enjoyed it. The similarities with the Soul series are very obvious from the start. Axioms are your souls or blood echoes that you gather by killing enemies and you lose them when you die. Though they've come up with a fairly nice twist to this mechanic, instead of just leaving your axioms on the ground or absorbing them into the enemy that killed you like in Bloodborne, you have to fight and kill your own phantom in the level to recover them. This didn't happen every time though and I think this may have something to do with it being a demo because sometimes the phantom would not spawn so I would just lose my axioms forever. On top of that, you can also find bundles of axioms scattered throughout the level which act kind of like the souls of warriors and heroes from Dark Souls and every now and then they will be dropped by enemies as well. These are not lost on death and can be consumed once your next one of the space vaginas which are your bonfires or lanterns to gain some axioms and level up. And outside of losing my axioms every now and then, probably due to this just being a pre-alpha demo, I have no issues with these systems. The combat is very soulsy as well, you have to commit to your actions and they are uninterruptible once they start. Each swing has a significant wind-up and this goes for both you and the enemies. One thing that is different though, is the healing. You do not have an Estus Flask, you do not have blood vials. You replenish your health with a spell that, at least in this demo version, is found very early on. But there is a catch. The spell requires energy. And energy doesn't regenerate on its own. The only way that at least I found in this demo version to regenerate energy was to hit enemies. This is a system that I personally really like. It allows for mistakes to be made throughout the level, but it isn't as limiting as something like the Estus Flask was in Dark Souls 1. And it allows the levels to be far more complex and virtually infinite in size, since you always have more than enough healing if you play well. But as is to be expected in a pre-alpha demo version of a Souls-like game, the combat isn't as polished as it should be. First up, there is a significant delay before and after each attack. And while I can understand a delay before you swing a heavy weapon, it shouldn't be there with something like the light sword that you get as the newborn. And the delay you get after each swing is just straight up terrible and shouldn't be there. And it led to me being hit over and over again while mashing the dodge button after a swing, which my character would just not perform. And just like with the Soulsborne games, every action will drain a little bit of stamina. Once you run out of stamina, you can't do anything. There are three ways in which you can mitigate or avoid damage. You can block, which at least with the shields that are provided in this demo will never stop the full force of an attack and it will always drain a little bit of health as well as stamina. You can roll, which is probably the best option because it creates a nice bit of distance between you and the enemy and it also seems to have a couple of invincibility frames to save you even when you get hit while rolling. The roll, however, changes into a dash once you lock onto an enemy, just like in Blood. Bloodborne. And at least in this demo version, the dash is pretty much useless in almost every situation. And it either has very few or even no invincibility frames whatsoever. This means that to avoid damage by dashing, you have to completely get out of the way of the enemy's weapon. This would not be an issue if the enemies didn't track your movements with their attack or if there weren't enemies that had big weapons with wide sweeping attacks. But since the enemies do track you and they have wide sweeping attacks, the dash is pretty useless. And towards the end of my playtime, I stopped locking onto enemies completely just so I can dodge instead of using the dash. This, however, is an issue especially with more dangerous opponents since the camera unlocks itself as well. And I found it way too easy to simply lose track of the enemy and get hit out of nowhere. One feature of the combat that I very much enjoyed were the abilities that were tied to each weapon. As you kill enemies with each weapon, it will unlock abilities that you can use in combat. These can range from a simple damage buff to throwing the weapon to deal damage. However, these drain from the same energy system as the healing spell. This is why I like the system so much, because while it allows you to theoretically get an infinite amount of healing assuming that you play well, it can also be used for buffs or even dealing damage. But that's still not everything, there are also guns. I managed to find myself a rail gun and a demon cannon, and both of these drained energy as well. Both of these were secondary weapons, so if you want to use them, you will have to give up a shield, and they do not generate any energy when they hit enemies. 
The level provided for this demo was fairly enjoyable to play as well. It wasn't just a straight corridor littered with enemies. It allows you to explore. It is not a sprawling level by any means. I mean, this is just a demo, but it allows you to explore, which is nice, and I finished it multiple times. Now, while there are a few more things that differentiate this game from Dark Souls, for example, the ability to jump up rather than forwards, which could be used for some great platforming sections later on, there are a few things that feel a little bit, well, try hardy like for example the spawn disease screen you get when you die which is made to directly mirror the you die screen from dark souls and i get it it's just a dead screen but why does it have to be like dark souls i rolled my eyes as soon as i saw that screen it doesn't add anything to the game it will just make people like me roll their eyes and it feels like you're jumping on the dark souls bandwagon and don't get me wrong i want more good games like dark souls but don't try to be dark souls we already have a very good dark souls game it's called dark souls do your own thing the things I've enjoyed the most about this demo were the things that were different from Dark Souls. The healing system, using the same energy pool to heal or deal damage or buff yourself. Or your phantom that you have to die in order to recover your axions. And it's completely fine to draw inspiration from a game like Dark Souls. But please don't try to make the best Dark Souls you can, because that's not gonna get you anywhere. Try to be the best hell point you can. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about as far as Hellpoint is concerned. So overall, I have enjoyed the demo provided and I'm looking forward to the next build. But as I've said already, less Dark Souls, more Hellpoint. Because Hellpoint looks like a lot of fun. And that's pretty much it for the video. Now, if you're interested in the game, you can check out CradleGames.com. I will put a link in the description. And as always, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.